Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are now ready for Maxi San Miguel. Maxi is a founder and director of IFISC, the Complex Systems Institute in Mallorca, Spain. He made major contributions in photonics, statistical physics, non-equilibrium phenomena, complex networks, and computational social science. We are very happy to have you, Maxi. Sorry for the glitch up before, and we look forward to your presentation. Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, the question I want to discuss with you, it's a very general question. Uh, and is, is complexity a science? Is a possibly useful new way of engineering, or what is it? And in this sense, this is very much related to what already Henry said, and in a sense also to what uh, Rosario said. Now, my claim is that complexity is uh, a new way of thinking, which is needed for a scientific renaissance that can transform society. And that this transformation will take place by our ability to make new and proper questions that can be addressed. As an example, it was also mentioned before, is it the question, how do we cure cancer or how do we manage it? So let me first tell you what I mean by scientific renaissance. This is uh, <clears throat> a new scientific culture, a new way of looking at uh, reality uh, that goes beyond the idea of uh, experts or a <clears throat> specialist in a given uh, discipline. And looking back in history, this has happened at least twice that I can uh, identify. First is the uh, classical uh, Renaissance with Leonardo da Vinci as an example, but also at the beginning of last century. At the beginning of last century, <clears throat> there were people, and here is an example, John von Neumann, von Neumann, which were simultaneously founding fathers of such different disciplines as quantum mechanics, economics in game theory, or computer science. <clears throat> now, let's start with science. What is science about? Science is <clears throat> about understanding, and it is about claim about the statements of universal value that physicists call laws. In which sense complexity is a science? Well, there are several examples in which uh, complexity has brought in questions with universal values and, and understanding. Let me start first by emergence. It is the idea how these evolving patterns of a uh, uh, flock of birds emerge from the uh, simple interaction of, uh, of birds. And from there on, we can still propose a definition that the system has emergent properties when an effective theory of the system at some scale or level or organization is qualitatively different from the lower level theory. And it has been already quoted the idea that wetness is an emerging property of molecules of water in the same sense that uh, <clears throat> uh, society is an emerging property of individuals regardless of the uh, political view of uh, Margaret Thatcher. So uh, beyond, this, uh, uh, beyond this idea of uh, emergence, there are other examples like the multi-scale approach. How do we go from, say, neurons or uh, below, if you want, down to the genome, to the uh, uh, functioning of the brain, or if you want, beyond that, to, uh, <clears throat> to human behavior? This is essentially to the uh, science of, of, uh, of complexity. And within these uh, multi-scale uh, approaches, there is the uh, well-known uh, theory or property, or whatever you want to, to call that, of scale-free and self-similarity. Here you have an example of self-similarity in this uh, uh, <clears throat> picture by Salvador Dalí that uh, uh, Benoit Mandelbrot said that uh, he was inspired by that picture to construct his theory of fractals and uh, self-similarity. Now, these ideas uh, have been found across disciplines. Again, this uh, book by the uh, last speaker of today was already mentioned. This uh, universal laws of growth, innovation, sustainability, and the pace of life in organized cities, economies, and companies, these uh, scale or multi-scale approaches and scale-free problems. But 
beyond across disciplines, these ideas are ordered cornerstones of the creation of new disciplines, like the city of science that has emerged recently. Now, this is one side of the coin. The other side of the coin is what I would like to call engineering. Engineering uh, is not about the universal things, it's subject-oriented. It is a specifically. And for me, the two key words of uh, engineering are control, and today also the use of data, the use of big data. Now, what you have here is uh, a snapshot of this, uh, well, internet in real time, the availability of big uh, data, and complexity is also about how do we use this, <coughs> uh, this data to control in a more efficient way the systems so that they have a better performance. And complexity is also about learning from this data how to control, con to, how to control these systems and how to be able to predict their, beh their behavior. Now, in terms of prediction, I would like to, in terms of control and both prediction, I would like to uh, talk about the uh, Ptolemaic solar system that was already mentioned before. Uh, in this uh, dichotomy between understanding and control, it has been stated in more than, uh, more than one times in very prestigious journals that control is the ultimate level of understanding and that when we understand really a system is that we can control it. This is grotesquely wrong, as just looking at the solar system, one can say we understand it perfectly, but we cannot control it. Now, if we go to the question of uh, predictability, the Ptolemaic solar system was rather good in prediction, and it was based on data. Still, the level of understanding that uh, it conveyed was very low. Okay? So, to give you an example of complexity engineering, also mentioning, is uh, traffic in cities. Uh, traffic in cities is based on the analysis of big data and it is about controlling the traffic. Okay? But this example of complexity uh, engineering, of course, uh, relies a lot in the idea of emergent behavior that occurs in cities and also in multi-scale problems. I mean, in, in transport, you, you, you have the scale of people walking, the, the scale of, uh, of cars in the city, then you have the scale of roads coming into the city, metro, train, a, a multi-scale uh, a, a multi problem. Okay, so we have these two ingredients, science and engineering, with these two key words for each of them, universality and understanding, data and control. Now, they are put together and they become entangled in the mind of a complexity scientist, in a cooperative interaction and multiplicative interaction. And this is the state of mind of a complexity scientist. But a complexity scientist is not isolated. Complexity scientists interact among them. And, what, whoops, and when they interact, emergence of course. There is the emergence of a new phenomenon and this is what I would like to call the complex systems approach that emerges from this interaction. Now this complex systems approach is what I call at the beginning of uh, this short talk a scientific renaissance. It's <clears throat> a new way of thinking that can transform society by transforming the way of thinking, the way that we address problems. And of course, this has consequences. Consequences which are very important for society. First, a new education system. It is about how students of all ages, including ourselves, learn how do we learn about reality. Learning based across disciplines and learning based on analysis of data. It is also not about a new classification of science, but more a declassification of science, where borders among traditional disciplines become meaningless and where new disciplines appear as a spin-off of, of the complex systems approach. 
this was perhaps the example I've mentioned of, uh, of, uh, uh, of city science. And last but not least is the ability of being able to define proper questions. Proper questions that take into account the limits of predictability and the limits of control. And taking into account that uh, uh, what we observe is not reality, but it is reality in response to our way of questioning. So is it a proper question to ask how to control markets to avoid financial crisis? If you go out there to the street and you ask, many people would say, yes, this is a very important question. The same people would immediately accept that it is not a proper question how to control nature to avoid the existence of a hurricane. Okay, so perhaps the proper question, like the one in cancer, is not the one which is on the screen, but how do we prepare and how do we construct tools that can mitigate the effect of a financial crisis. To, to end with this short presentation, I have to address the question that Stephen posed. Where do we go from here? Okay. Where I think we need to go from here is to go out there and to disseminate in the society that there is a new way of thinking, a scientific renaissance, that this new way of thinking is important and instrumental to ask, to answer questions of social relevance and to make society aware of the existence of this new way of thinking. Then perhaps what we are doing here today, or even more what uh, we are doing in the, in the afternoon with uh, artistic uh, uh, presentation is an example of the way that we have to go. Thank you.